Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about a couple of mushrooms today. One edible and one not so edible. And also talk to you about how to sort of take apart the identification of two genera of bolete type mushrooms. So the thing I'm pointing at you right now would be called a slippery jack type mushroom, I suppose, uh, because there are not a lot of common names in this genus that are consistent and specific to each species. The scientific name for this, uh, I'm pretty confident, is Suillus hertelis. There are a couple of other uh, slippery jacks that have similar features. However, I'm pretty confident that that is what this is. Regardless, I'm going to show you how to identify all of the slippery jacks, or at least get started with it, and all of them are uh, edible. Warning uh, for, I guess, people who get squicked out by mushrooms that can be a little slimy. This genus is the, you know, like I love Suillus mushrooms. Sometimes they're very sticky or slimy or tacky on top. Suillus hertelis and uh, also Suillus americanus, which is a similarly sort of yellowy uh, and common uh, Suillus mushroom. They're a little like tacky and sticky, but sometimes you have this like glutinous pellicle uh, that just covers the whole stem, or excuse me, the whole cap. Anyway, as far as uh, eating these are concerned, I recommend uh, uh, dehydrating them and rehydrating them uh, in water, and basically treating them similarly to a lot of porcini mushrooms. So the drying of the mushrooms sort of concentrates their flavor, and then when you rehydrate them, you can use the rehydration water uh, to flavor things. And so that's a, a really good um, trick. It's not a trick. It's a method for preparing a lot of these bolete-type mushrooms, and also morel mushrooms. Like, there's a variety of uh, species and species groups that benefit from that uh, sort of preparation. Anyway, eating these fresh, I have never tried. No, that's a lie. Uh, I actually tried to make myself a Suillus casserole when I lived in California, and it was heinous beyond belief, uh, and it was very, like, slimy in the middle, uh, but then I uh, was told by a good friend that the best way to handle these is to, again, dry them out and then rehydrate them, and many of them have that sort of earthy, pleasant flavor that porcini and porcini-type mushrooms have. And uh, even though these are sort of peculiar little mushrooms in the Suillus genus, they're all uh, really tied together and distinctive based on one feature alone. So they're called slippery jacks because so many of them are slimy and tacky, but the real thing that uh, makes a Suillus a Suillus is this feature called glandular dots. So what you can see on the top of the stem is these little itty bitty dots. And many times they're resinous and will leave a little bit bit of a, a deposit on your uh, fingertips. One of the reasons I am calling this Suillus hertelis is that the other uh, species that I think it could be, Suillus americanus, uh, these glandular dots are far more resinous and will leave sort of brownish smears on your fingers. Okay, so you can see this really distinctively um, on the mature mushrooms and even on uh, the youngins and the babies. So this is a really good marker, the, the marker for a Suillus mushroom. And many of them have, um, you know, like vague staining reactions, many bolete type mushrooms. So these spongy undersurface mushrooms, uh, like your porcini and your, uh, what I'm gonna share you, with you in a minute that is not edible and the retiboletus genus. Uh, so let's see. Um, this one is not going to stain for us very quickly. So we're going to take a look. Um, oh gosh, here's one that I opened up a little earlier. And what you can see is a really faint bluish stain uh, that's developed sort of around this yellow flesh. And so uh, a lot of bolete stain blue, the speed and degree to which they stain blue is quite helpful in identification. 
but I also have to qualify. Boletes are stinking hard. So if anyone approaches you um, and says that they were a bolete expert and can identify every single one, you should look uh, at least askance at them because it is very difficult to identify all of them. That said, there are some that are really distinctive, um, including that, you know, the Sewillus genus is really distinctive because your glandular dots define them. Uh, and oftentimes slippery, but you know, uh, I guess I'll pick it up one more time to show you one more feature. And this isn't for all Sewillus, but many of the ones that grow in North Carolina where I live, uh, this spongy undersurface is actually quite thin. And a lot of your bolete type mushrooms is big and fat. And it has this cool sort of arrangement that is a little bit radial. And uh, you know, some boletes just don't have this sort of like widely enough spaced uh, sponge to sort of observe this interesting, you know, radial um, arrangement of them. So uh, let's go back to our, uh, this is called the ornate stemmed bolete. And I think you can almost immediately uh, understand why that is the common name. So uh, compared to glandular dots, this is a feature called reticulation. So uh, it's basically like an overlay of interlocking net-like material. Sometimes it's really thick and shaggy, uh, but most of the time it is uh, more of just sort of like a um, it often to me is less um, angular and triangular than these little sort of boxes and things. So often it looks almost like, uh, you know, um, the bark of a tree to me when I look closely. This mushroom here, let me show you another one where that reticulation is really evident. Another thing that I love uh, about reticulated mushrooms is usually at the top and the apex of the stem, you have this like really tightly packed, elaborate reticulation. And in the case of highly reticulated boletes, uh, you see that descend, you know, descend down the stem and become wider to one degree or another. So, uh, retiboletus ornatopes, or the uh, ornate stemmed bolete, is typically inedible because it is very, very bitter. So it's not dangerous, Many boletes are unpalatable, and very few, very, very few, are problematic from a um, edibility perspective. Now, this is interesting because, excuse me, this is a little sour and a little bitter, but not nearly as much as I would have expected. So often I am in a different location and I'm finding uh, different collections of this specific species. And most of the time they're like really, really bitter. Um, and that wasn't super bitter. Like it gave me a little bit of a kick. And so, you know, I am gonna assume it's the same species, but also qualify that uh, Ornatopes is a, a species group. There are some up north that are edible. I'm kicking my tripod to get this closer to you. And, uh, but anyway, this is a really beautiful mushroom because of its all over yellow appearance. I really like that feature and it's kind of um, buff and uh, not at all slimy on the top. And that's really helpful with a lot of boletes, you know, especially comparing a slippery jack to our retiboletus. Uh, you can feel that this is, you know, nice and smooth-ish, but it does not have any slime, no pellicle, anything like that. Underneath, uh, you have a really finely um, and tightly packed thin layer of these pores. And so uh, that's Retiboletus ornatopes. I really love both of these mushrooms because boletes can be very, very difficult, as I mentioned. But uh, Sewillus is a really consistent genus to lock down. And Retiboletus ornatopes is a wonderful way to observe and get familiar with reticulation as a feature, but also um, just observe a really gorgeous bright yellow uh, unit. The one thing I will end with, because um, I was talking about sliminess, uh, is there is another mushroom that is sort of similar to this, that is really bright yellow, uh, that's called, um, oh, I can't remember which of the, which of the genera of boletes it is, but it is, um, I mean, it could be 
Boletus. But anyway, uh, courtesy is the Latin epithet, which means courtesies, whatever it is. And it is very slimy on top and will leave a lot of slimy, uh, well, you know, a lot of yellow staining on your fingers. And so uh, oftentimes the color is a little bit deceptive when it comes to identification. Fortunately, on top of that, like really distinctive, um, you know, reticulation I've been talking about for ages and ages, uh, the, the um, size of the mushrooms uh, differs substantially. So whatever, whatever it is, Curtis I is very, uh, slender and small. And this is more like, this is a fairly young specimen when they come up and they're really little babies, they come up and they're about the size of like your average pawn chess piece. Whereas your, uh, Curtis I actually, it looks a whole lot like this slippery jack. So tall and a little bit frail, very sticky on top and very, very yellow. Uh, so, I am really delighted to share these two mushrooms with you. I hope that you have a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like confidence with boletes than I do. I spent a lot of time looking at them, especially the ones that radically stain blue, uh, but they are very difficult. So if you don't have a lot of confidence, um, know that you're not alone because this is a very, very difficult thing to lock down or uh, get mastery of, even if you're an expert uh, and, you know, use microscopes and so forth. But again, these markers are really helpful. If you're interested in mushroom hunting, it's really uh, uh, very prudent to start with a lot of these and breaking it down to genus so you can recognize a genus, if not a species. And that will give you proficiency in some structure that makes it easier to accelerate your learning into the future. I hope you have a wonderful mushroom season and find a billion of them and we'll talk again soon.